guys, welcome back to APCSP Unit 4 review. So, my name I'm Kaiyua. Today we'll go we'll be having a simple review on building algorithms, evaluating algorithms, solving hard problems and parallel and distributed computing. Okay, so we can start with expressing algorithms. So, expressing algorithms can take many different steps and different di many different forms depending on the purpose and the level of for formality. So, one of one of the ways to express algorithms is using pseudocode. So pseudocode is a way to write down algorithms that, that resemble programming languages but without strict syntax rules. And it is highly readable and is meant to give idea and logic to you. So an example would be, the steps would be like, you start with an assorted list and then choose a pivot element and pa part partitions the element into two parts and then rec recursively apply the algorithm to the position but partitions and uh, the second way to express algorithms would be the code implementation I want to show an example right now so in this code there's a bubble sort function and it implements the bubble sort algorithm which sorts the array by repeatedly swapping ad adjacent elements and if they are in the wrong order so let's break down and, sh and see how does it exp express algor uh, algorithms. So here on the n equals length quotation arr, so here it initializes the array length. So n stores the length of the array, and then it determines how many pass how many passes the algorithm needs to take to ensure all elements are stored. And sorted. And the second, we have the outer put, outer loop. So uh, this one would re represent the how many arrays are passed through this code. So finding which n. So the outer loop would represent each pass through the array. So for each pass, it will push the largest unsorted element to its correct position at the end of the array. And the loop will be repeating n times, making sure it's enough passes for full for fully a sort of the array. And the third part we have the inner circle, which which is the inner loop. And this one compares to adjacent elements. So this would be the <coughs> for for Jane range for Jane range zero n minus i minus one. So here this one. And the inner loop would it iterate the unsorted portion of the array and stops before the elements already know to be sorted. So with, with each pass i, the inner loop's range decreases n minus i minus 1, so it would avoid rechecking already sorted elements at the end of the array. And the fourth, st fourth step, step, we have the swap if necessary. So this one is the if arr in bra big brackets j is greater than arr j plus 1. So here for each pair of adjacent elements, if the current element arr brackets j is greater than the ne next element, uh, then they, they are swapped. This bubbling up of the large element continues until it reaches the correct position in the sorted section of the array. And at last we have the return disordered array, so which is the last step of the R code. And after all passes, the array is sorted in ascending orders and the function returns it. So here's a basic demonstration of how does uh, expressing algorithm when using code. And now come back to our topic. So we have another another way of expressing algorithms, which is using flowcharts. So here we can see, and before we learn how to express them using flowcharts, we gotta know the basic flowchart symbols. So here I put them out. So Oval represents the start and the end of the algorithm, and rectangle represents a process of action step, so it initializes max to the first element. And three diamond, this one represents a decision point, like comparison, or is current el element bigger than max. This would be an example. And four arrows, this in indicates the flow, flow from one step to the other step. So let's see it here. Here I made a simple flowchart. This one begins with a oval labeled with start, 
and then we initialize the max to the first element and then we go to the next step which is uh, using the loop setup uh, which is a rectangle to indicate entering of the loop and then fourth we have the diamond this one is the comparison decision label whether the current element is greater than max value or not and then we have the the two different paths so one is if it's bigger and the other if it's no and then if it is a yes path then it draws an arrow to another rectangle it is labeled up, update max to the current element and then if if it's less it will have no path it will continue to the next element in the list and then we have the end of the loop but we but before that we we are going looping back to the decision step and now we can go to our next topic which is uh the building blocks of our algorithms and we're going to look specifically into sequencing and iteration so sequencing is the specific order in which the steps of instructions in an algorithm are executed and each step is follows followed by, by the previous one in the linear ordered way and this one can ensure that the operations happen in correct order to produce the desired desired result and then for iteration, so this is a process when repeating a set of instructions multiple times and it is typically used to achieve through loops, so like loop, while loops or uh, for loops like that. And this allows al algorithms to perform rep repeated tasks efficiently and spe especially useful when working with collections of data or performing actions until a condition is met. And if you want to put them together, they will be split into two working parts so sequencing would be working together with algorithm to achieve compl complex tax tasks and iteration would prove the rep repetitive action and sequencing dedicates the order of the steps within each iteration i'm going to now show an example of the code so in this code the first part which is sequence which is sequencing so this we can see total sum this initial initializes to zero and this happens only once before the loop as it must happen first and then on the third step which is the inside loop we add, we add each number to the total sum and this happens in sequence for each element and then we are on the step four which is also sequencing so the return statement occurs after the loop com completes and making sure that the final sum is returned. And then the iteration would happen f in the for, for the for loop and make sure that it goes through each element in the number list, allowing us to add each number to the sum. So for the number lists 3, 5, 7, 10, the output, output should be 25. And uh, other step we're going to be talking about is counting the operations. So counting operations is a key part of anal analyzing algorithms efficiency and by counting operations we determine the time complexity of, an al of the algorithm, giving insights into how its runtime grows as the input size increases. And we're going to be using the three examples to demonstrate how to count the operations in different kind of loops and algorithms but before that we, go, we can take a look, look at the steps you, we take we take to determine an algorithm so we first ident identify the basic operators so this is this is the most important step in the algorithm this impacts the whole runtime so this these often include arithmetic operations comparison assignments and function calls so in a loop basic operation would be comparison made to check loop conditions and the second step is the analyzing loop and recursions. So this is this is uh, typically contrib con contributing to the most of the algorithm's runtime and is focused on the counting operations with each loop or re recursion. And the third, third step we have is considering conditional statements. This is uh, ex executing some of the time depending on the input. 
So you often calculate the worst case scenario by counting operations over the longest possible path through these statements. And the fourth, fourth step is evaluate function calls. So if an algorithm calls another function, you need to consider the complexity of, the, of that function and treat it as a black box, box which, whose operations you've already analyzed or can estimate. And the final step is the calculating the to total operations, so the sum of the operations from each part of the algorithm to get the total code, then simplifying using the asymptotic notation to express the complexity in the simplest form. And now we're going to take a look at the three types of uh, loops and how to count their operations. So first one would be the simple loop and second one the nested loop and operations rec recursive algorithms. So we can take a look at the first code, so which is here. Um, so the assignment here, the total equals zero. So this is one, one operation and loop loop for element in ARR, so this executes n times if AR has the element within the loop. So this one is the nth operation, so looping through the n value, and total total operation, total uh, plus, ele plus equal elements, so greater than or equal. Uh, this one is another operation of the Code and it ex executes one per iteration, so it contributes to n operations. And the last one we have the return to return total. So this is counted as one return return statement and counts as one operation. So the time comp complexity will be uh, one plus n plus one plus n, which will equal to two n plus two. And for counting operations for the nestle loop, so as you can see here, it works basically the same. So the n equal to, or we can say assigned to the array list. So this is one operation, and the loop is the nth operation of the outer loop. And then the uh, inner, inner loop is also an nth operation, and the last print print the array values is one one operation per pair, so this would equal to this would equal to the nth to the power of two. So we only count the nth operations, and for the third one we have the operations in recursive algorithms. So they consider the recursive functions to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. So here you can see that the a, a is less than or equal to 1, so this is the first operation, so this one's comparing, and then we have the return value, which is, which is also one operation, and at last we have the return value, this is the second recursive call, so this doesn't count. So then we have the calculation part, which would be the base case, so for n equals 1 or n equals 0, the function does a comparison and return and a return. So which takes 1 and and like calculates it to the recursive call and then it will end up into n to the 2 to the power of n. So we have a small side, side node, so which is the heuristic for solving complex problems. So this one is based on routing and pathfinding. So this can be used in algorithms to determine the roadmaps, like finding the shortest way to some kind of the place. And it, it will generate the perfect for perfect option for the path. And APCSP won't go really into deep with this, so we're not going to talk about this really mu too much. But generally, it is just uh, trying trying these uh, steps out and find the closest way to the exit. So here are the some of the I info if you're interested. So now we're on our last topic. So it's the sequential computing, imperial computing, and the 
distributed computing. So let's start with sequential and par parallel first. So if we compare those two, we can see that sequential computing are easier to program, understand, and debug since test tasks are complete in a predictable order. And the parallel computing it is efficient and for large tasks because it can process large data sets or complex communications faster by dividing the workload. And the disadvantage for the sequ sequential computing would be that it's slow for large problems because it's with only one processor task like the data analysis simulations or large calculations and it, it can take a long time. Also that it doesn't scale so performance is limited to the speed of a single processor. It's the same, it's the same disadvantage but it affects many parts which can be a demanding application. But for parallel computer, computing, it requires a really careful management of tasks. And it can break, break a problem into parts and managing com communication and synchronizing results can be introduced overhead that limits speed gains. And we can look at the example code of them. So for a sequential approach, you would iterate through each element in the list. So adding it to the cumulative total. So here we can see that each element is processed by one in a single loop. So it will it will be looped one by one, and the time complexity where the n is the number of elements in the list, and it will be really slow for large lists because each element must be added to the sequence. And here is an example for parallel execution. So this is. This is dividing the list into smaller parts and then assigning each part to a different processor and then sum them uh, simultaneously and once, once each processor finishes, the results are combined to get the total sum. So if you want to dig deeper, the, so the list is split into chunks and each of the uh, pro processed, processed parts is a different core and partial results are combined at the end. So the main parts you can you, you can remember is like the sequential execution. So this is straightforward, straightforward and suitable for tasks where each step is dependent on the previous one. While parallel execution speeds up the processing for large or complex problems by dividing the workload through, it can be more complex and requires managing overhead. So in, in APCSP, the spirit of computing is taught as a method of solving complex problems by dividing tasks across multiple computers working together and each node performs part of the task independently and results are combined to achieve the final solution. And this, can, this is easier to add nodes for larger tasks and speeds up the large scale task by processing parts simultaneously and it can uh, tol tolerate, the, tolerate and ensure the system remains available even if the nodes fail. So some of the examples would be the cloud computing, search engines, social media, or scientific modeling. And we're not, so that's, this is basically it for today and thank you for watching.